So firstly, Josh, getting back into Ireland camp after a historic series victory in New Zealand. How has it been for you? It's been good, yeah. It's been great to be to be back in with the lads. Um, obviously, we've some special memories together from from the from the summer tour. Um, but overall, I think everyone's really excited to get going against uh, the world champions this week. Um, there's no no better challenge to have up next and. I think we've learned a lot and from, from the summer tour and over the last couple of years and it's been building nicely so we're hoping to keep improving and everyone's really excited to go for, for this campaign. And for you personally, European Player of the Year, Irish Players Player of the Year last season and recently winning Rugby Writers Award as well and of course married in the summer. Can life get any better for Josh van der Flaer? Yeah, it's been, it's been going well. Um, the wedding, I suppose, I have to say is the highlight. Uh, my wife would kill me otherwise, probably. But um, yeah, it's been a it's been a, a really enjoyable year. Uh, it's been obviously some great memories. Things have gone gone well personally for me, and uh, yeah, I mean it w- would have been nice to have a bit more success with Leinster, I guess, um, to finish off with some trophies. But um, yeah, overall, it's been it's been a really special year. Yeah, since making your debut for Ireland in 2016 against England, 43 caps later, you still haven't played South Africa, the world champions. So it must be exciting for you on Saturday as well. Yeah, incredibly excited. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're obviously the world champions. Um, this was their their style of play. It's um, they're one of the obviously the great teams of of historically and and a present in world rugby. So. Uh, very, very excited to get going against them. It'll be a, a huge challenge and a great learning opportunity for a lot of people in this group. I think there's a good few in the squad who haven't come across uh, South Africa um, either. So definitely be a, a good learning, a learning, um, learning process for us and really excited for it. Yeah, it's a very different challenge, I suppose, to New Zealand. And as you mentioned before, you just said a lot of guys haven't played against South Africa. So it's a first for many. It is, yeah. Um, a lot of us, obviously, with the South African teams coming into the URC uh, the last few years, um, we have experience against South African opposition. But I think when you when you put in, bring in together all the best of their players, and obviously the the very physical, abrasive style of play they play, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be really exciting. You mentioned there the physical side, which they play in. They've named their team two of them, Steph Detoy and Sia Khaleesi. Two guys, I'm sure. You'll love to go up against. For sure, yeah. I've never never played against either. Um, so uh, unbelievably exciting. I mean, they're they're up there with the best players in the world um, across across their whole team, really. Um, but particularly, I suppose, Khaleesi and and Peter Steff, uh, they're yeah as good as it gets in terms of back rows. So a very very exciting challenge up against us. So looking forward to that. See, when you have guys like that you're playing against, does it focus the mind even more? Knowing that you want to get get one over them, I think so. Yeah, I, I guess it's, rugby is such a. I mean, it's a team game. It's it's not often you have one on one confrontations. I guess, but certainly you'd be hoping to to minimise their their impact on the game and and try and impose impose our game on them as much as possible. Um, and you got to trust trust the guys either side of you to look after them as well because there's some there's some dangerous players all throughout their team. Um, but certainly, uh, it's always the focus, I suppose, of every team or any team I've been a part of. You try and try and be better than your opposition, and if everyone's better than their opposition, you're looking at a pretty dominant performance. So, I guess that's the goal for for the weekend. Yeah, let's hope it happens. If we just go back two years ago, Josh, you're starting for Ireland, playing pretty well, good international, as they'd say. But then it's been well documented the last 18 to 24 months. You've just taken your game to a different level. Was there a time? Can you remember? Or how, how has that happened? Um, I suppose I've always tried to work really hard on my game, um, trying to work on what I'm good at, but also trying to work on being more as much of an all-rounder of a player as I could. Whether it's uh, especially playing uh, open side flanker, it's very you're kind of you're in the forward pack, but you're kind of a hybrid between a back and a forward and it's been something I've been trying to really work on, whether it's my skills or uh, tackling. And then I suppose ball carrying was one thing I hadn't, I did a bit of, but I wasn't something that I was maybe known for. Whereas defensively would have been more what I was, I was, uh, 
would have would have been um, known for, I guess. So, I guess ball carrying has been something that's that's gone pretty well. Something I've really tried to focus on, and then um, I guess uh, the competition as well within within Leinster, especially the likes of Scott Penny, um, Dan Levy, unfortunately haven't retired, but. Um, Will Connors, these lads playing against them. Sean O'Brien before that. Um, you have some of the best number sevens you'd ever see, and they all seem to be in my in my club. <laughs> so um, certainly makes it very competitive, and I think pushes you on a lot in in that way. Um, I mean, look at uh, say like Will Connors as an example. Um, he's I'd say he's a better tackler than me in that. And that's something that will be puts me under pressure then because I feel I've taught my game in that way. And then um, you've got Scott Penny, who's an unbelievable ball carrier, and um, and then Dan Levy's an all rounder, great over the ball poaching. So you have all these people who are kind of you feel are better at you in other areas. And I suppose to to stay ahead and try and get picked for games, I, I kind of feel like you have to keep improving in all areas. So that's kind of what I've been working on. And yeah, it's it's. Uh, it's gone well the last last couple of years. Yeah, it's great to hear the competition spurs you on. But I just want to take you mentioned there ball carrying. Why has that specifically just got so much better? Um, I think I, I suppose previously I would have been happy to uh, suppose to sit back or not even sit back, but I'd be happy to to give a pass to someone else or there was a bigger lad inside me which in the forwards often happens most of the time because most lads are bigger than me um I'd be happy to to get them to give them the ball get them uh carrying because that's what I kind of felt other people were the other people in the team who were probably slightly better at it than me so I was happy to be the one hitting the rock or running a, a an option off them um but it's something I focused on has been trying to to get more more uh, impact in the game and one of the one of those ways was ball carrying try and get a bit more involvement and um, I suppose I've just developed developed I guess along with that tried to add a few new things tried out a few different strategies in terms of the way I carry and uh, it seems to have, to have gone reasonably well yeah it seems fascinating to hear do you feel targeted more as a player and how do you work on that certainly yeah um, well I remember when I first, maybe my second or third year uh, after playing for Ireland, um, I remember chatting to Stuart Lancaster and I said, I was saying to him, I'm kind of, I was finding it hard to um, to get involved involved in games. I felt I wasn't getting as many turnovers. Um, I was probably getting hit down to the ground a few more times or kind of taken out a bit. And he just, I remember him saying to me, he was like, that's it's kind of what you, you have to develop as a player. You kind of get maybe two, a year or two years where you're kind of breaking onto the scene where people don't really know what, you, what you're about. And um, you can kind of get away with, with probably getting away with more than you would otherwise. But then after that, teams coming into the weekend, they know their opposition. Teams are good these days with analysis and everything. So you know who you're coming up against. You know what certain players are going to do so certainly um, definitely you get targeted and I think you have to you have to be able to adapt and add new things and, and try and change things up as well Yeah you've been around this Ireland squad for 6-7 years why is this group so special now? I think it's uh, I mean you've got there's a lot of young younger players who've kind of built up experience they maybe got their first caps maybe a year two, three years ago um, and they've built up a huge amount of experience. I guess it's, is you. I mean, you look back maybe two years ago, and um, we probably weren't putting in the performances we knew we were capable of. Um, I think the the coach, the attitude of the coaches and the players is that we we keep developing. And I think if you look at, through it chronologically with this group of players, how we seem to have improved. Obviously, there's there's glitches every now and then where things haven't gone quite uh, our way but I think the team has, has evolved and developed and certainly gained experience all the way through the last couple of years and I think that, that's, that's been the goal the last couple of years anyway is, is that it's, it's, not, it's not just looking at the November internationals and saying it's all about that or say the summer tour as an example 
it was never just about the summer tour it's always how does this group get better how can we improve and the summer tour goes well how can we improve now for the november series and and build towards the six nations or world cup so i think that's that attitude and i suppose that mindset of of trying to develop every every time we come into camp uh, has certainly certainly contributed to that great stuff last couple for me do you feel this game on saturday at south africa or in your world cup group has a bit of extra spice to it certainly yeah i mean i suppose people have that in the in the back of their minds but um i think for us it's it's a it's just it's a great opportunity really um they're the world champions they're the team to beat i guess and uh yeah it's it's very exciting i mean the fact that we're due to come against come up against them in just over a year's time or a year less than a year now um shows the i suppose the the importance of 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 learning from from whatever happens in the game against them and uh and certainly and building from there and this team now do you feel compared to 12 months ago say even maybe away in france do you feel they're sort of more collected and also more prepared to deal with the physicality that south africa will pose i think we, we're fortunate we've got some some brilliant players all across the park um who are well able for physical confrontation as you would have seen um i think provincially uh over the last few weeks you see uh how well teams have stood up playing against each other and and also against the, that south african bigger uh so it's kind of confrontational style of play um so certainly it'll it'll be important on the weekend and, and something i think we're well prepared for and with the success the ireland team is going through at the moment all these wins is the next three Saturdays is the what is the minimum for you guys in the case of we've got to win every game in November? Um, so it's hard to obviously that's 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 what we want to do I suppose that's the goal in many ways, um, but I think from from my perspective and and I think the team's perspective is that we want to put in really good performances I think uh, South Africa world class side. Um, and if we can put in a performance we're really really proud of and i think knowing this group and what we're capable of i think if we if we can put in a uh, a great performance i think that is enough hopefully for us to win um so so i guess as a byproduct of it yes winning but i think if we can get some really good performances and and really continue to develop and improve uh, as a group from from the summer then that'll be that'll be successful Finally, for me, how much better can Josh van der Flair get? And also, what else do you want to achieve in the game? Um, hopefully, I mean, my attitude would always be to try and keep improving. Um, I think everyone, every team, every player seems to be improving, especially around these parts. Uh, lads seem to be improving pretty quickly. So um, I keep trying to get as good as I can and push myself to the max and... Um, and I guess looking towards rugby, I guess uh, with each each uh, each year and each competition certainly has its uh, has its goals. Like obviously, I mean, if we were to win the next three games, win every game for the rest of the year in the World Cup, that'd be pretty <laughs> that'd be pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty competitive, so I like I enjoy I enjoy winning and getting on top of people. So. Um, I'd say, yeah, I mean, a successful couple of trophies with Leinster and winning the next few Irish uh, competitions would be good too. Brilliant stuff, Josh. Thanks Brilliant. for your time. All Thanks the best.